Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Holy Happy Hour. I am your host, Josh, and I wanted to first of all start by saying um, thank you to the first 1,000 subscribers. We're actually almost at 1,200 at this point. It has been wild. Um, I remember when we first started this thing, I told my wife, I was like, when we hit 100, then we'll start doing whatever it was. But I was just, I had this vision in my head of like, maybe we'll hit 100. What, what if? I don't know. Like, we'll see what happens. And to now be at 1,200, uh, making our new goal 2,500. So if you're watching this and you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like, comment, engage in the channel, help support this uh, great stuff that God's doing through this channel. Um, another thing I wanted to uh, go ahead and, and let you guys know about before we get into a little bit of what today's topic is about um, is October's lineup. So October, November, December, the lineups just keep getting better and better and better. And I'm super excited. So this month of October, we had like a little one week break. That's why we're doing another uh, Thoughts with Josh. Um, but we had a one week break. We're coming back next week with Terrell Lauderdale, who is a focus missionary, um, or a previous focus missionary, is now uh, up in, in I'm going to, I'm probably going to, we'll, we'll confirm it next, year, next week, but Long Island, New York, I believe. But she's up in New York, and she is uh, continuing to do work for focus um, on the uh, front of content creation. And um, we got some big announcement stuff with her, but she's going to be um, on the podcast talking about the intercession of saints and how we can live our lives through the saints and with the saints for God. And so I'm super excited for that episode. And then for the first time ever, we have a three-part series on the sacraments. We're going to break them down section by section, the sacraments of initiation, the sacraments of service, and the sacraments of um, service. No, I just said service. Service, initiation, healing. That's the other one. I was like, oh, man, I put myself on the spot and almost forgot the third one. But, yes, yeah, so we're going to break them down, and we're going to have two priests and a deacon come on. Let me turn this on Do Not Disturb so I don't get huge tinks in my ear. Um, we're going to have two priests and a deacon come on to give us the lowdown. I feel like I'm starting to get such a grasp on these sacraments, and I'm just falling more and more in love with them. The more I'm exposed to them, the more I take advantage of them, like like consuming the Eucharist and and taking advantage of confession and just growing more and more in love with them. And so I'm excited to get with them and to talk about more um, details, more like where is it biblically, where is it at there, um, especially stuff like confession. I know a lot of you guys will comment, have questions about confession, where it's at biblically, not believe it, or maybe you are Catholic, but you kind of, that's one of your hangups. And so we're super excited to dive deeper into the sacraments. And then coming up in November, we got some great, um, guests already lined up, including Carlo Broussard, again, and Dr. Edward Shree, um, one of the founders of Focus. So I'm super excited. A whole lot of great stuff coming up um, in the next couple months. I'm super excited. Again, thank you for the first thousand subscribers. Be part of the first 2,500, and let's continue to grow in our faith together. So recently, we've obviously heard um, the, the Pope had made some comments about um, all religions are a path to God. And one, I am not the person to make a comment on this, but, but one thing I did, I had a thought on, was we're in the age of social media. We're in the age of, of podcasts. Uh, everyone and their dog has a podcast. Um, when I first started this thing, I tell people, I think I'm going to start a podcast, and people, their first reaction was to laugh. And we're in this age though, of social media to where when news comes out, a lot of people take to it right away. And so I feel like we're in a dangerous era of people – slandering the Pope before they understand either truly what he said or understanding uh, or maybe even ever hearing what he said in the first place. Um, I know there have been some stuff, and, and I'm not here to make a comment on that in particular, but uh, I want to first of all say uh, from the Holy Happy Hour, we are 100% behind the, the, the authority of the church, the Catholic Church. Um, if there is a reason to ever call out the Pope, then it should be done. But I, I don't think that is ever going to be from a podcast or from a social media platform. I don't think that is the place to be calling out the Pope. That's something that should be directly called out to the Pope himself. And so I think we all need to chill with the, the sharing stuff, calling the Pope a heretic, stuff like that, especially throwing around words like that, throwing around words like heretic. It's kind of like these days, everybody wants to throw around the word racist. And it's just like, that's just such a word that used to be like, almost like a cuss word. People would say racist, and it's like, oh, oh my gosh, you just mentioned racism. And now that's just like an everyday word. I feel like some people talk about that on the daily. Um, that, that's kind of the same thing here with the Pope. 
and, and some of the, the suffering. All paths are, are all, all things are a path to God. Um, all, all religions are a path to God. Um, I, I could see where people are coming from of where they want to call it out as, as heresy or, or where um, people are concerned about it. But podcasts and social media platforms, that's not the place to, to do that. So you will not see that here. Now, going off of that comment, because I've heard that from other people, so we're not talking about the Pope at this point, I've had people comment on here before that all religions are just a different way to heaven, a different path to heaven. We all have our own journey. It's all, all the same thing. Um, we're diving into 1 Corinthians in my Bible study this week, and it was a time in Corinth where the church was super divided, and I don't think that that, that statement would have been rel rel relevant back then, and I don't think it's relevant now. Now, the, the thing is, though, when it comes to the Catholic teaching, can non-Catholics go to heaven? Absolutely. Like, we are saved, like, by God. God is giving us this gift of salvation, giving us this gift of inheriting the kingdom of God. He's, he's, he has the power to bring whoever he wants to in there. Like, like people use the thief on the cross as an example of when he tells him, like, you will be in, in, in the kingdom with me um, to this day or whatever. And there is, like, there's not a limit on God. But I feel like people get hung up on this, on this trying to have this question of, or, or thinking that there's a strict teaching on do Catholics believe non-Catholics can go to heaven? And I do think there's some Catholics out there that say absolutely not, like because they, they're not uh, receiving these sacraments. But I think what that's doing is that question, it can't be answered because you're asking a question that is putting limitations on God. Can a non-Catholic go to heaven? Absolutely, because by the grace of God, anybody can go to, go to heaven. By his grace, though, Nothing by what we do or what we achieve. Um, he, he, can, he does not have any limits. He, he can do whatever. Uh, you can do whatever good you think and follow whatever religion you think is right. And he could keep you out. And so this is a, a power given by him. And it is not one of those black and white, like, do you think that all Catholics are going to hell? Do you think non-Catholics are going to hell or vice versa, going to heaven? And it, it's such an interesting question that I feel like is brought up so many times. But we, we are in this in this battle of religions fighting each other instead of us seeking out those who maybe don't believe in God, period, like atheists, agnostics. We're not seeking out people who are just unaware and ignorant of the fact that there is a, a God that created this earth. And, and we're fighting each other, which is playing right into the devil's hands. That's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to divide the church as much as possible so that People have to really seek out the true faith. Now, my personal opinion, I was Protestant, grew up in a Baptist church. Um, I could not tell you anything about the Baptist church from that time because I was so young and I, I just didn't pay attention. And I only went because I had to. Got into some non-denominational churches, and that's really where I started to question everything. Everything was such a feel-good church, a feel-good message. Everything was so um, really just like, Jesus died on the cross for your sins, so you are saved. It was a definitive teaching, a definitive answer. So it kind of was like, okay, well, as long as I believe in him, then I'm good. Like, I, I should ask him for forgiveness, but that means I could go have premarital sex with a girlfriend and then just ask God for forgiveness, and I'm good because he died on the cross for my sins. And I know a lot of you guys, like Protestants, are saying, like, no, 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 that's not what we believe. Like, your, your heart's not in the right place if you're going to have sex and knowing you can ask for forgiveness later. That's not what you're thinking. I'm just saying that's what I believe. That's not, not I'm not putting that, that belief on anybody else. But it was when I started getting into the Catholic Church, um, and, I, and I started having questions on, like, there's got to be more to this. Like, this can't just be this story, a, hit, a, a historical story of this, this man, this a God coming down to, to be a man, to die on the cross, to save us from our sins so that as long as we believe in him, we're good, we're safe. As long as we believe in him and try to be the best we can, try to keep our heart in this right place, then we're good. And so I started to, to kind of see these holes in my, my, my puzzle of my faith life. And I started to realize, I, I, I like to say this, that there were seven puzzle pieces missing, and that's kind of the seven sacraments. And as I start to get deeper into my faith, I started to realize, like, this kind of tying back to 
do all all religions lead to God? And, and I just believe that the, the richness and the trueness of the Catholic Church filled in the gaps that other religions didn't have. Confession being one of them. So confession, we're going to have have a great um, conversation with Father Broussard. He's going to explain explain that one more in depth, especially the biblical teaching of it. Um, also, Father O'Brien will be going into that one as well. But confession being one where God said to the apostles, receive the Holy Spirit. Those who sins you forgive are forgiven, and those who you retain are retained. And I just thought to myself, you know, I never thought about that. That is quite the power to give to somebody. Forgive sins. That's awesome that we would have that power. But we have the power to retain sins. But then when I was going through RCA and said, well, this is a, a power bestowed upon priests to do in persona Christ in, in place of Christ to forgive people's sins, but in a setting. Like they needed to be ordained priests to be able to do this. And all of a sudden, I was like, okay, that clicked. It made sense. The Lord established the Eucharist at the Last Supper. Uh, do this and remember it to me. He did all this this breaking of the bread. He blessed it, took it, took it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, eat of it. And it started to make a little bit more sense. The like communion was always just kind of remembering that story. But when we kind of don't, when I start diving deeper into it and starting to realize, like, no, he he meant this. Like John six, he he says that those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life. And so then the crowd start murmuring, and he's like, "Amen, amen, I say to you." And he, he does says it again that those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life. And he says it and doubles down on it six times. He even changes the word eat and and. and I'm not the best with remembering Greek words, but he changed it to a word that means more of like a gnaw. Like he started using more graphic words. Gnaw on my flesh and drink my blood, you, you will have eternal life. And all of a sudden I was like, okay, but did he really mean it like that? But then it goes on that the crowd started to murmur and then they left. Thousands of people started leaving Jesus. Jesus himself was there. He had performed miracles in front of these people. He'd done everything he could to prove that he was God. But he was, these people were leaving him and stopped following because of this very strange teaching. Very strange, weird. They didn't understand it. But instead of getting clarification, instead of trusting God, they left. And so I was then posed the question does that seem like he was being symbolic or was he being real or realistic? Because he's being symbolic and be like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Come back, come back, come back. Like, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. No, no, no. I meant. It's symbolically like, sorry, I was using graphic words. But he didn't. He doubled down on it. And then what does he do? He turns to his apostles, are you going to leave as well? And I'm like, oh, that like, that almost seems like, I don't know if he was angry or mad or anything, but that, that seems like something that like my four-year-old, would be, I'd be getting onto her and then I look at the two-year-old like, are you going to do it too? <laughs> so it seems like that, that's, I love it. But then I love the response. Like, Lord, where would we go? And I just love it, that trust and that faith that they have. Without that, yes, there wouldn't be a church, um, but or he would have had to establish it with somebody else. Um, but yeah, there's so many great moments. There's just being a couple examples, but to keep it short, because I don't want to just ramble on about all the other ones. Um, it started to fill in these gaps. And so what I say to you is you, you take in this, this comment that was made, maybe made by the Pope, or but it's definitely made by others. But when people think that all religions are just a different pathway to heaven, I challenge you to really dig into your Bible and just start with John 6, start with 1 Corinthians, and start with some of these, these times where the church was super divided and people were starting to teach different things and, and what, how the apostles responded to it and start thinking about it being one church. And he instituted the Eucharist and, and he made this declaration, eat my flesh, gnaw on my flesh. What does that mean? He gave the, the apostles the, the, the authority to forgive and retain sins. Like, what does that mean? Does your church line up with that? Because I think if your church doesn't line up with those teachings, then there, there could be a chance it's like not the path to heaven, not the path to God. And not all that say, Lord, Lord, will he, or what, what is it? Not all say that Lord, Lord, um, will enter the gates of heaven. Because he will say, go, I, I do not know you. And so for me, I want to take all this seriously. I want to dive deep into it. If you're not getting into your Bible every single day and trying to 
understand it even more, trying to dive deeper into the faith, making sure you're understanding whatever church you're going to, their teachings, and making sure it's lining up with what the Bible says. And that's what I found in the Catholic Church. I found the, the Baptist Church didn't line up with it. The, those non-denominational churches, the feel-good churches, definitely didn't line up with it. And then getting into what it is now. Um, so if you guys want another video on a little bit more of my story, go check out my video. It's called How Life Church Made Me Catholic. And it was a, a great video. It's not slandering Life Church. They do a lot of really good of baptizing people. Um, but go check out that video. Um, and again, don't forget to like and subscribe these videos. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this. Like I said, I call it thoughts with Josh because a lot of times my mind just races. I'm, I'm not the most theological person to give you these great detailed answers to then go evangelize, or I can evangelize you, I can change your mind. I'm not Trent Horn, I'm not Carlo Broussard, but I am someone who's hungry to grow in my faith, to grow and to learn, and that's what this channel is all about. So comment below if I missed anything. Comment below, maybe another, if you're, you're Catholic, another example that you could use as well of how maybe not all religions are a path to heaven. Or maybe if you are not Catholic and you maybe disagree, comment below how you disagree, like what you disagree with, because I would love to hear it. Um, I'm always open-minded, but I would always love to hear it from, from you. I want to re be respectful, but I want to listen to your, your questions, and I want to do my best to get an answer to you, whether that's me looking up on catholicanswers.com, which is where everyone should be looking it up, or if it is me um, sharing my experience with you. So don't forget, evangelization happens out of relationships. So when you guys get into these conversations, and it starts to get heated, it starts to get angry, people are slandering each other and yelling at each other, that does nothing for the kingdom of God, and that we, we need to learn to love someone where they are, be loving enough to, to, to be strong in our faith and to tell them the truth, but we need to make sure that we are always coming with, with charity and always coming with love. Um, you guys have a great rest of your week. Again, we are looking forward to the, the lineup coming up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we will continue Thoughts with Josh next week on Monday as we get into, I don't know, some other topic. Comment below if you have any ideas. Other than that, we'll see you guys next week. God bless.